When you're in Kansas, you never know what to expect. It's almost like Florida, but with less water and more windmills. So today we are in Judge Crum's courtroom, and this is James Watts. He is one of the more prominent defense attorneys who many of you probably know from his sign on the wall that says, keep calm and carry. Today, he is acting as a standby counsel for a pro se defendant, also known as James Watts. We have one James Watts who firmly believes in the laws of Kansas and upholding them. We have one James Watts who believes those laws are satanic and so many other things, but I'll let him tell you. Let's go to court. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Your Honor. Yes, sir. Good afternoon. All right, Mr. Watts there at the jail. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. All right. Let's go ahead and go on the record. This is in the District Court of Butler County, Kansas. Case is entitled State of Kansas versus James Brent Watts. Case number 22 CR 83. The state appears by Cheryl Pierce. Uh, defendant James Brent Watts appears in person, pro se. Um, attorney James R. Watts appears as standby counsel. Uh, we're set today to take up um, a motion filed by uh, Defendant Watts, as well as a, an issue raised by um, Attorney Watts as to what his role is as standby counsel. I thought it'd be appropriate to take that up on the record with um, Defendant Watts present so everybody's on the same page as to what Attorney Watts' role is as standby counsel. And I think I'll, I'll address that first. Um, in my vision of standby counsel, um, Attorney Watts would be not to provide legal advice or trial strategy, that sort of thing, but rather um, be there to explain uh, trial procedure, how things work, um, the inner workings of a trial from voir dire, opening statements, uh, jury instructions, opening arguments, closing arguments, uh, that sort of thing, procedural matters, um, ensuring that uh, defendant Watts has a fair trial, that the trials run efficiently. Um, I don't expect that you'll participate in any examination of, of witnesses or, or address the jury in any manner. Uh, I just want it clear that you're um, helping with the, the legal type um, things that go on in a trial rather than strategy, because Defendant Watts has chosen to represent himself and wants to present his um, theory of defense himself. So um, that's in a nutshell kind of what I expect your role to be. Also, you might be able to provide him with some limited access uh, to the outside world for maybe providing some phone numbers or addresses for witnesses he might want to get in touch with. I don't expect you to be a, a role of private investigator or, or anything like that, but as Mr. As Defendant Watts is in custody, if you can help him with just some, maybe providing some information you can get there handily, I think that would be appropriate. Um, also to advise him of um, certain rights he might have, such as his right to testify or his right to choose not to testify, those sorts of things. So, Attorney Watts, does that kind of help clarify what uh, your role will be? Well, it does, Your Honor. And, and the reason I ask is, was it was not very clear, and that's not necessarily the fault of the court by any means. There's very little guidance out there in the case law or as to exactly what that representation means. It has always struck me that if you're not very careful, it can be a trap for an attorney. Um to bring on 1507 or uh, some sort of a 
a um, disciplinary problem that you're setting yourself up for that sort of problem. I don't want to be in that position. Um, I've told Mr. Watts, James B. Watts, that I'd be I can assist in uh, obtaining subpoenas and documents if he helps. Um, we haven't really discussed strategy very much. To be perfectly honest, he's not really interested in hearing what I have to say in terms of strategy. Um, so I think that helps a lot, Your Honor, as to um, I've noticed some cases <clears throat> that have come up through the appellate system where a, a uh, standby or counsel has been essentially put into the position of taking over when a defendant in the middle of a trial turns to him and says, I've done all I can. Would you take over here? And I don't think that's a realistic position to be in for any attorney to have to step in in mid trial and take over a trial. And I'm hoping very much that's not the position I'd be expected to be in. Should that happen? Well, I, I've, I've seen some of those cases as well. And, and it, frankly, I don't, I don't feel that that's um, appropriate for someone who's, who's assisting the standby counsel. So that, those are uh, what I had envisioned as, as your role. Uh, let me address Defendant Watts. Do you have any questions as to the role of, of Attorney Watts as standby counsel? Uh, well, I've asked him for things and he hasn't gotten them, but uh, I've had bad experiences with attorneys. Attorneys in the Bible are the worst people you can bust. They're absolutely of Satan and the devil, devil and everything else. Attorneys and lawyers are the worst people there are. They're evil. I've been screwed by them up at Chase County. They've allowed people to lie, and I had to do time in prison. So I'm not going to deal with that. They're going to be put to where they need to go. Hell. Uh, there's no, I don't know of any attorneys that, uh, that I can say have done good. So no, I'm not, Mr. Watts, you're you're parents, entitled to parents, represent yourself, and that's what my parents that's have committed perjury, saying because they're afraid that they're going to get in trouble for something for me having firearms. I hit them in their house. I've always have firearms. I always will. By the laws of the heavens, laws of the universe, there's no restrictions on anybody having firearms to fight evil with. So I'm not going to deal with that. I'm not going to abide by that law. That law is purely satanic. But uh, anyway, no, I, we're, Mr. I'll Watts, this, we're I'll kind of veering this. away from the issue of Mr. Attorney Watts's role as standby counsel. So, Ms. Pierce, do you have any comment regarding the issue of Attorney Watts's role as standby counsel? No, I think that uh, the court and Mr. Watts um, have a handle on it. All right. The other um, issue I wanted to address today is a motion filed by Defendant Watts, which is titled Motion to End the No Contact Order Between Me and My Parents. So, uh, Defendant Watts, I'll allow you to argue your motion at this time. Well, my parents are guardians and they're also trustees of the estate. They handle my money and I need access to my money. I can't get my money and I need that polygraph. I want it for evidence. I can introduce it in court many different ways, whether it's taken that law enforcement use polygraphs for uh, to establish probable cause or to disallow uh, a case, uh, probable cause or not allow or not have probable cause, the showing of it. They can absolutely be, I can file them in it with filings if nothing else. I want that polygraph taken. But anyway, uh, I've got other, I've got many filings. We're going to have to, I've got evidence. I've got to talk to arms list on my accounts there. And uh, I've got to also uh, call uh, the phone companies, contact them to see what records they have and what arms list has. I've got to get responses from them. The whole idea of a preliminary hearing is to tie down evidence in that because their absolute perjury attaches in a preliminary hearing. Uh, there don't need to be uh, uh, 
any lies or perjury like that from my parents going on, on the firearms not being mine or me shoving them down. I'm not going to deal with it. Now, you've got a situation because the deputies told my parents that they were going to get in trouble if I had firearms, evidently. I'll have to find out exactly what all was said. They haven't wanted to tell me or even county attorneys talking to them about me having firearms. I believe every felon needs to have firearms. The felons aren't the evil and wicked people. It's all positions of power and authority in society and governments and the wealthy that are the real evil and wicked people. The ones that are in the prisons and jails are some that have been possessed by some devils, demons, and unclean spirits at the commands of the real evil and wicked ones to try to fool everybody that evil people are in jails and prisons. They uh, are. Mr. Mr. Watts, you're kind of veering away from the uh, motion that you filed was to allow contact between you and your parents. Do you have any more? Yes, I do. I've like got bank say? records I've got to get show my access to cash on hand. I've got phones out there I've got to get a hold of. I've got a phone at the Butler County Jail I've got to get a hold of that they seized out at Leon. I need chargers to go with them, but I'm going to have to go through them and pull out different messages that I haven't deleted yet on me purchasing firearms and ammunition. And that's information you believe your parents will be able to provide you? They have the access to the phones down there. Uh, also, the county attorney, I've requested paperwork listing all of the firearms and ammunition was seen that was seized I need to know that because I'm going to question every bit of that at the preliminary hearing. I need full list of everything that was seized of my property. And it is my property. All right, Ms. Pierce, your response to the request for Mr. Watts to have um, the no contact order lifted with his parents. Judge, quite honestly, I thought that had been lifted months ago. Um, there was a um, time that he was in the hospital that we actually did a order lifting that. Um, that was a few months ago. Also, um, my contact with um, the county jail around that time Um as I recall, was that that no contact order was lifted. If the jail is still operating under a assumption that it is still in place and they need some kind of written order to the same that it is not, I will be more than happy to do that. Um, I have no problem with him having any contact with his with his parents, um, again, I would request that uh, all of their statements are recorded, so I don't have an issue with that. So, um, again, I I thought that it was been lifted. That issue had been addressed a long time ago. Okay. Do you do you recall when that may have occurred? <clears throat> well. When he went to the hospital, the hospital required an uh, a order, um, and that was ooh. That was way well, back. Um, Well, Ms. Pierce, if you're not objecting to it, then uh, I don't think it uh, matters at this point. I guess my question is to the jail, and maybe I don't know if the person that's there with Mr. Uh, Watts can answer that question or not, whether or not they are still operating under the uh, thought that there was a no contact order. Um, but again, I don't. I don't know why they would be because I've I've spoken to Mr. Reynolds about it. So I don't know if that's I, I don't know if Mr. Watts has attempted to make some kind of contact with his parents and he's being told he can't. I don't know if 
I, I don't know exactly what the circumstances are that the reason that Mr. Watts continues to believe that there's no contact order in place. All right. Well, I don't, I don't believe the phone's going through. I don't believe the phone allows them to answer. Uh, it needs to be checked on it. But uh, I need to make sure I have access to money. For different, well, there's, for the, the court will lift the no contact order. If the order hasn't been lifted previously, that will allow you to have contact with your parents. If you need to communicate with them by mail, if you're not able to get in touch with them by phone, you're certainly allowed to do that, Mr. Watts. Okay. Is there any way we can have the phone check to make sure it would connect if they will answer it? Well, that's not something that's uh, something the court does. They can't. You can't order rentals to uh, check the phone and make sure it'll, it'll connect. Uh, no, I've got to see. I've got to talk to them about access to those fo other phones out there, cell phones, and then the jail's got one. But uh, I need to have access to them and charger so I can go through the text messages and uh, possible phone numbers on those too. Okay. Well, there's the, no contact order is, is lifted, so you can communicate with your with your parents. So. Uh, Ms. Pierce, would you be able to produce just a brief order? So we've got some, I didn't see anything um, that was part of the court file, just so that's part of the court record. I will do so, Judge. Okay, now we've already got the preliminary hearing. We've already set that. That's going to be October the 1st at nine o'clock. That's an in-person hearing here at the- There's Judith. no way out. Your Honor, there's no way I'll have my evidence by that time. Okay, well, we, we've got it set. So if if you're going to be seeking a continuance, you can raise that at the appropriate time. But for now, I'm this case has been pending for a long time. We need to get it moving. Uh, we've had this date, the preliminary hearing date set since August the 12th. So... All right, I believe that addresses the two issues the court wanted to, to take up today. Uh, Ms. Pierce, anything further? No, Your Honor. Yeah. There's other filings that are in there. One is to reschedule the October 1st date and a motion, and then also, uh, oh, the list of the firearms and ammunition that I'll be addressing in court that they say were their property. I need those lists provided to me. And uh, I need to have that polygraph, too, taken. I don't know why we haven't got situated on that. Well, Mr. Watts, if, if you want to pay to have a polygraph done, you can do that. It may not even be admissible. You'd have to file a motion to... I can still have that use it in other court proceedings. Well, if, can, if you want to do that, that's got to be at your own expense. The court doesn't provide funds for you to do that. Yeah, but I don't have access to getting in touch with anybody to get that done. Okay, well, I don't have or, any promotions uh, that have been filed recently, Mr. Watts. Have you received anything, Ms. Pierce? The last one um, I have is the motion to end the no contact order, which was filed August 23. I haven't seen any other motions that have been filed since then. Judge, uh, according to what I have in my file, um, on September the 3rd, there was a motion that I, this is filed by Mr. Watts, the defendant, motion that I be given list of all my firearms and my ammunition send, seized for me. And then there's also a, uh, another one that is um, and that was done on September the 3rd at 11.47 a.m. And then there was another one that was filed September 3rd at 11.47 a.m. Motion to reschedule the October 1st date of the preliminary hearing so I can get all my evidence collected. 
Um, and then, of course, the motion to end the no contact order, which was filed on Octo August the 23rd. I think those are the ones that um, that I have that are the most recent filings, Judge. Right. Angela, do you can you try to pull those up, please? I'm pregnant for you. All right. I'm going to take a brief recess and I'm going to look these over. I I would rather just take them up now. Judge, Please, Judge, I just address those. Yeah, Judge, I I want to clarify with the court that um, Mr. Reynolds, who's uh, watching this, indicated that the no contact order was lifted. That Mr. Watson, his parents, have been speaking periodically on the phone. Mr. Reynolds checked the phones and the phone is not blocked, was blocked, unblocked months ago. So Mr. J.B. Watts defendant has had access to his parents' phone uh, for months. So I, told the cell phone. Um, I will be more than happy to do an order lifting that no contact order as of today, but it looks like it's already been done prior. Okay. okay. Right. I'm going to. I have not had unlimited access. There's been uh, one or two times I talked on the cell phone just a little bit, and I was supposed to talk again, and it didn't go through. All right. Well, I'm going to take a brief recess and review these other pending motions. Thank you, Your Honor. Hey, can you hear me, James? Yes. What? Uh, now, hang on. Keep in mind, everything that's said here right now is open to the internet and the public and everything else. This is not. Yeah, I, I, was, I was just wanting to know. James, you do, Mr. Watt, James, did you hear me? This is not private. Okay, you understand that? I just want to know about what has been set up on the polygraph test. Uh, the best polygraph, the polygraph examiner that most people use around here is an Augusta. I mean, I've had a chance to talk to Augusta. Um, I frankly I have no idea what he costs. Well, I, I have money that's been on. I haven't been using much money that has been on my you, account. So there's James, plenty of money out there. James, with What's very, happening? very James polygraphs, and we touched on this before. Polygraphs are not generally admissible in court. I can use them in other ways for filings and stuff like that to get them on the record uh, uh, as in paperwork for filings. And this and that, if I can't get introduced in court, I'm questionable why it can't be introduced in a uh, when I've got people lying against me. Uh, because polygraphs are not reliable. They are not. How come, how not come law enforcement uses them at times to establish whether there's probable cause or not? Because law enforcement uses them as an investigative and interrogation technique, not as truth telling, because they don't do that. All right. Um, I, Ms. Pierce, are you still on? Yes, sir. All right, we'll go back on the record. Same appearances as before. I now have before me a motion that I be given lists of all my firearms and ammunition seized from me and a motion to reschedule the October 1 date of preliminary hearing. I want to address the motion uh, regarding the firearm list at this time. Mr. Watts, I'll give you an opportunity to um, argue your motion. Go ahead. Well, uh, since I'm going to be, my parents are saying that evidently I took my own firearms and ammunition, I want to be able to question them on that, have abs know absolutely all the ammunition, everything that was in there by the brand types and brands and stuff, and a list of all the firearms and everything. Uh, I should be entitled to that under discovery. I never was provided it. What response, Ms. Pierce? Um, judge, typically that all that information is part of the KSO, KRL, um, um, 
I imagine that it is summarized or it is a part of that as well. Um, I don't know whether he got copy full copies of Discovery or not. I'm not familiar with exactly what it is that Defense Counsel provides to a self, uh, rep uh, an individual who is representing themselves. Um, so I don't know that he did or he didn't get copies of all of that, but that information should be a part of that arrest document. Um, but then again, at the same time, I do not have a problem whatsoever providing him with a list. All right. Um, yeah, typically I would assume that the seized property is included in the list that's usually provided in discovery. So it sounds like the a list does exist. Um, I don't know what what you've been provided, uh, Mr. Watts. I have not been provided that. It's been absent. Everything that was seized from anywhere, I have no record of anything. I know other stuff was seized, uh, phones and different things, probably a computer at the house down there and different things. Uh, I don't have a list of anything that was seized anywhere. No list whatsoever. All right. Um, Attorney Watts, is, is that something that you could perhaps assist him in getting a copy of the list of seized firearms and ammunition hey, your honor we've provided i provided to mr watts the copies of the discovery uh, documents provided to me by the state with some redaction and frankly given that the victims here are his parents who obviously has intimate familiarity with uh not very many uh, redactions that was provided some months ago um the charge here and I'm kind of the charge here is a burglary and robbery where the items that were taken were firearms. Those items taken are listed by the alleged victims. They're listed in the police report as uh, a number of six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Looks like twelve firearms seized. It doesn't specify the particular firearms, or not. I shouldn't say seized stolen um as to whether or not there is a list of firearms seized by law enforcement i can double check and see if i can see that um i'll see if there is such a list okay well we don't need to to go have everybody go through everything now but it, um to the extent that this list exists i would ask that mr um, if there were firearms seized and if there's a list of those, that that be provided to Defendant Watts. Yeah, they were seized down at Leon when I had that Leon on me and in the truck. And then there was also the firearms out the house. And they're accusing me of stealing my own firearms. So I need a list of those because there will be questions on those. And I also will uh, contact try to go through arms list and get all the contact with people and my phones. If, if the lists exist from law enforcement, then I'll, I'll order that those be provided. If, in well, fact, so they do if I don't have access to a list, they shouldn't be allowed to say I stole it if I have no way to know what they're saying I stole. Yeah. I need to know the types of ammunition and how many rounds and stuff like that. So I know where the purchase was made. All right, now we'll take up the Sorry. motion to reschedule the October 1st preliminary hearing date. Um, you've already made some comment to that regard, Mr. Watts, but go ahead if you have anything additional you'd like to say. Well, I'm just, I'm gonna have to have time to contact people and get all this stuff lined up. And I've got to write, I may have to write several letters to arms list and, uh, net 10 phones and stuff like that to get, try to locate information and I'll have to probably have a, some way to send money for copies. So it, it's going to be fairly time consuming. I've also got 
my bank records that need to be dug out from my parents over the guardianship, uh, they're saying they, I did tell her I needed those on that cell phone call that was real quick that I did get through uh, to them, but I haven't been able to check up on that or, or talk to them anymore on their phone. But anyway, uh, I need uh, access to my bank records to show purchases. And uh, she don't know how long it'll take her to dig those out. And I need those to evidence in court. Everything I can evidence in court, I need to get questioned and evidence so there won't be any perjury. I've had perjury to happen and put me in prison up there at Chase County. And it's not going to happen again. I don't know why there isn't uh, liability for perjury in all proceedings. All right, Ms. Pierce, state's response to continuance request. Judge, um, we have, this is a 2022 case. Um, the first appearance on this um, came in on um, 4-18-22. So we are well past two years. Now, in the interim or during that time, there's been a competency evaluation. There's been a couple of care and treatments, those kinds of things. So that has delayed the whole process as well. Um, I, I don't, I understand the, um, the idea that, you know, he has things that he wishes to um, have in his possession for his, uh, to, to present his defense. I think that the court and Mr. Uh, Defense Counsel, Mr. Watts, just did talk about um, being able to assist Mr. Uh, Defendant Watts in obtaining uh, some subpoenas and documents and stuff of that nature. So I think that that can be done relatively shortly. Um, I don't have any necessarily um concern the majority of the um witnesses in this case for the most part um they are the defendant's parents um we've not had a uh, preliminary hearing in of any sort they are elderly um you always take a, a chance of something of their age when we deal with people of their age of unfortunate things occurring um and i don't want to in balancing his um the defendant mr watts need for an ability to accurately present his defense against this whole ideal of continuing to delay this um I would just suggest to the court that if the court is going to grant the continuance that the court would do it and um, make sure that we're not too awfully far out and that there is an order that um, it not be continued again unless there is um, um, extreme circumstances and that um, um, any delay that is caused by this particular request for continuance um, to be um, against the defendant. All right, thank you. Ms. And I know that we're not. I know that we're not at a speedy trial situation, and that we haven't had the preliminary hearing, or that we haven't done an arraignment. So I know that that doesn't necessarily apply. However, I want it documented that he is the one that asked for, the defendant is the one that asked for the continuance. All right. Thank you, Ms. Pierce. Um, going back through the docket notes, way back on September 20th of 2022, almost two years ago, we were set for evidentiary preliminary hearing. Uh, all the state's witnesses appeared on that date. Defendant Watts refused to make himself available 
uh, for the preliminary hearing. So then it ended up having to be moved and then uh, there were competency exams and, and so forth. This case needs to go to preliminary hearing. Um, Mr. Watts, you've had two years to be getting all of this stuff together and I'm not going to continue a date that we've had set now for several months for preliminary hearing at this time. If you wish to raise um, another request to continue the hearing um, when we come back on October 1st, you're welcome to do that. But I'm not going to reschedule it for now. This case needs to um, move forward. We've had too many delays. Okay, Your Honor, right. you should know that before uh, why I postponed it before, I didn't have the evidence then. I had requested evidence from Attorney uh, James R. Watts as far as information from arms list, uh, the phones, uh, the list of firearms, ammunition and stuff. I had requested stuff like that before and didn't get any response to it. I should have an opportunity to try to destroy probable cause in a proceeding that perjury will be liable. Okay. You'll have that opportunity I, I, October the 1st. What's that? You'll have that opportunity October the 1st. Okay. My parents are lying, and I I'm, uh, need proceedings to get that under control. All right. Well, we'll... we'll and uh, I also, back I also need to get new glasses. I need to have an eye exam. I filed a motion that might not have gotten to the court yet, but I need to get new glasses and eye test and new glasses for court. Okay. I, I haven't seen seen that particular motion, but we'll take it up in due course. So, all right. Ms. Pierce, anything further? No, Your Honor. Mr. Watts, anything further? No, sir. Well, I just want to make sure that uh, I'm going to go ahead and try to get letters off the arms list of net 10 phones and start tracking down the, the evidence there. And uh, I still want that polygraph taken. I'll be using it for any and everything I can. But uh, I need to make sure that, that stuff's in the process, even if it don't, isn't introduced at the preliminary hearing, I still want it. Yeah, well, Court filings and the use of trial. To obtain that, you have that right. So, all right. If there's nothing further, we'll be in recess. Thank you, everyone. Mm -hmm.